which we want to bring in Dr. Haral Tipperneni, emergency medicine physician based in Arizona. And Dr. Tipperneni, it's great to have you back on the program. I guess first, just getting your thoughts on this shorter timeline, the booster shots now potentially being administered six months after that second dose instead of the initial uh, thought thinking there, which was eight months. Does this make sense to you? Well, thank you for having me. Um, you know, it does make sense because we're following the data. And and I like what Anjali said is that we have to let the data guide us. And the data shows us that if we have waning immunity at six months, then that is the appropriate time for a booster. Um, you know, especially with what the Delta variant has brought to us, uh, we have to be incredibly mindful of trying to protect those folks that are already vaccinated, as well as increasing the number of folks who receive their primary vaccinations. Um, this is really a bit of a race against the clock, and there's there's sort of a lot of balls in the air. We have to address those that are unvaccinated, those that are uh, sort of waning off on their antibody levels. And and then, you know, we have to be mindful of global vaccination rates as well, because as long as the Delta variant is out there and, and replicating, and we still have so many cases, not just globally, but in our country, we have potential uh, for more variants to develop. And, and obviously the greatest fear would be if there was a variant that was resistant to our current vaccines. If you are fully vaccinated now and at six months it's not waning and you're not immunocompromised, what does a booster shot do? Well, it basically is a it's a reminder to your immune system. You know, it's basically a a sort of a, a check in and to say, hey, you know, remember this antigen we need to be sensitive to. We got to keep an eye out. It, it really just kind of boosts up your immune system. And, uh, and you know, think about it. I mean, we get, uh, you know, you get tetanus boosters, right, every five to 10 years, depending on your exposure. It's the same kind of concept. Uh, and it's basically because at some point, if you've used up sort of your antibody uh, potential, you need to revamp or uh, sort of reboost your immune system to be on the high alert. Because as we know, with the Delta variant, uh, it's still very much out there and we are not out of the woods. So it makes sense to make sure that we are doing everything we can to protect all of those various demographics that I mentioned. And Doctor, I was reading in your state of Arizona, the number of hospitalizations, they've tripled in just the last two months from June to August. I'm curious if you can just give us a sense of what you're seeing on the ground there and whether or not some of the hospitals that you're involved with, if they're at risk of running out of ICU beds. Well, that's a, a really uh, important point that you raised. And, um, you know, just a few days ago, the Arizona Hospital and Healthcare Association put out a statement basically al alerting the public and, and the media that we are nearing capacity, that we are seeing an incredible surge of cases. And to let people know that, you know, what they're hearing, what they're seeing is real, the data does not lie, that we are seeing uh, an astronomical surge uh, in COVID cases because of this Delta variant, because of the number of people that are still unvaccinated. And and remember, it, schools have now opened up again. And as we all know, this is the big, uh, you know, debate that's out out there. Um, unfortunately, our governor has done everything he can to prohibit any kind of vaccine or mask mandates. We have vulnerable children in every single school district. Everybody less than 12 is not eligible for a vaccine. We know that. And yet we're putting them in situations where there are potentially people who are spreading the virus. They're unmasked. They're unvaccinated. And uh, it's no surprise that now our pediatric cases are almost 25% of our total uh, COVID cases in Arizona. In fact, we're expected that that group under 15 will now um, surge up to be the largest percentage or the largest demographic of COVID cases, which is obviously a big change from what we've ever seen before during this pandemic. Doctor, I want to follow up on that, because when all of this first started, I remember stories about a year ago that perhaps children had some kind of stronger um, immunity to the original COVID-19 um, virus because their, for lack of, I'm not a scientist, um, their, their immune systems had not been through different experiences and the adult immune system for some reason made us more susceptible. Does that, does that hold water? I mean, why are we seeing this surge among the youngsters? Well, it was definitely clear that with the initial COVID, uh, the virus that we saw, that 
um, the elderly population w was definitely the most uh, vulnerable. And we were seeing that, you know, the cases were, were less frequent and certainly less severe in children. Um, but what we also have learned now is with this variant, this Delta variant, it is much more aggressive. It's much more virulent. The viral loads are larger. It replicates much faster. So the game has changed. We are not dealing with that same version of the virus. And we have to change our guidelines and our behaviors with that. And that's why the CDC has made specific recommendations for schools. That's why all public health officials are recommending masks, encouraging staff to be vaccinated. Now we have full um, approval of the Pfizer vaccine, which hopefully will encourage more people to go out and get that vaccine because we are dealing with a different beast and we are seeing the numbers. They are not lying. We are seeing incredible numbers of ICUs that are overflowing, people that are getting sick at, at younger age groups. And we have to be more vigilant, and that means masking and getting vaccinated. Dr. Harrell, uh, Dr. Tiburnani, excuse me, the, one of the big uh, news events of this week when it comes to COVID is the FDA fully approving Pfizer's vaccine and Moderna, of course, uh, officially filing the paperwork for full approval of theirs. I guess from your perspective, because you talk to a number of patients, how significantly do you think this could potentially help raising the number of people who are willing to get vaccinated here in the U.S.? Look, I think there are a lot of different reasons why people have uh, unfortunately chosen not to get vaccinated. Um, and some of those are based in, in absolute misinformation and some of them are based in, in fear. Um, but still, those folks remain open minded to say, you know, we want to know that this is fully approved and then we'll we'll feel safer giving it to our family. Um, so it's a matter of kind of figuring out where people are and having that conversation, um, but making sure that they know the facts, that they have accurate information because there's so much misinformation out there. And it is terrifying to think of, of leaders like our governors who are letting that information propagate when we know the data is clear. Vaccines work. They are safe. They are effective. And they're free. I mean, there's no reason. Uh, and now with this full approval, there's no reason for every American who is eligible for a vaccine to not be vaccinated. And um, so I think it's just important to, to make sure people know the facts, that they don't get sidelined by misinformation because the risk is real. And remember, when you get vaccinated, it doesn't just protect you. It protects everybody around you. Dr. Haral Tibernani, emergency medicine physician based in Arizona. Thanks so much for taking the time to join us.